we would like to basically let you know that uh, Julia Pottinger, basically the topic that she's uh, recorded her session, she is not with us uh, live today. Uh, she is going to speak on API automation scenarios to consider. And uh, she introduces her well. I think she is one of the greatest speakers. She has been part of our Selenium Summit as well. Uh, I would like to basically, uh, rather than, let me share it again because I didn't share with the video option, guys. Give me a second. So let me unshare and share with the, the, the video recording option. Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well and staying safe. My name is Julia Pottinger. I am the Training and Development Manager at QualityWorks Consulting Group. You can find me on Twitter at ILOGE876. I'm over on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash Julia Pottinger, where I talk about test automation, API testing, manual testing, and a bit of development using React and Material UI. I also blog about these topics at juliapottinger.com, and I have a course on Test Automation University about test automation using WebDriver.io. Today, we're going to talk about automating the boundaries of your APIs. Normally, when we're doing automation for APIs, we only check positive scenarios and ensure that we get back a valid response. However, we need to go much further than that. We need to ensure that it returns the correct error messages and it does not allow for unauthorized access if a correct token or authorization code is not provided. We also need to ensure that it matches the schema for the response that is being returned. Additionally, we need to check workflows for APIs. And these are scenarios where you're going to create a user, then you're going to do a get request to verify that the user was created, and then you want to do some update or you may even want to delete the user. And today we're going to talk about these five scenarios that you should be checking when doing API automation. There are several tools that you can use to make API calls and do API testing. XHR is a XML HTTP request wrapper that you can use to make API calls. And if you add Chai or some assertion tool to it, then you can use it for API testing as well. Frisbee is another API testing tool that is built on top of Jest and it makes testing endpoints relatively easy easy to install and it shows you some examples of how you can do API testing. Another one that you can use is SuperTest and it makes HTTP assertions very easy via SuperAgent. Again, it shows you examples of how you can use the tool. We also have Chai HTTP, which is integration testing using Chai assertions and you can do regular API testing with this as well. We also have Cypress, which you can use to make HTTP requests and you can use to test your APIs. It provides you with documentation on all the supported methods, what you can expect to get and how you can go about testing it. For today, I'm going to be using Chakram and it's a REST API testing tool, but I've also used Chakram to test GraphQL APIs as well. So if you want to test REST or GraphQL APIs, you can do so with Chakram and it provides you with adequate documentation on what you need to get started, how you can install it. And it works along with Mocha, which is a very powerful BDD framework that I love to use. Something to note is that the Chakram module is no longer supported, but I wanted to pay homage to it because it's something that I have been using for a really long time. I'll also be showing you examples in SuperTest. This is a module that is very active. It has 2 million weekly downloads and it's really good. I wanted to show you more than one API framework to bring across the point that these five things that we are talking about today is not limited to just one framework. These are general rules and guidelines that you can use different frameworks if you're using Java and doing REST Assured 
you can use those different frameworks as well to bring across these different concepts as these are things that are able to be implemented in your API automation regardless of the framework that you're using. If we go to the documentation for Chakram, it provides examples on how you can use the module. It also provides some assertions that you can use and this is extended from Chai dot expect and it gives you that along with additional http matches such as expect it to have a cookie of a certain value expect it to have a certain header expect it to have a certain response status a certain response message a certain schema so there are a lot of things that you can assert that the response you are getting from your api matches if you look in the documentation, it will provide you with some more examples of those. And as said before, this is built on the chai.expect. So if you go to the chai, documentation you can see more chains of commands that you can use and if we go into the module.chakram it shows us different calls that we can make so we can add a schema we can add a method we can do get request we can do delete requests, we can do post requests, all the different types of requests that you can do to your API. It documents that as well as the parameters that it takes and what you can expect it to return. So we're quickly going to initialize NPM and we're going to enter all the details that we want and we're going to install Chakram as well and Mocha. Once we do that, then we'll have all the dependencies that we need to create our API tests. We're going to create a test folder that will contain all our API tests that we are going to be running. If you're using SuperTest, the steps are very similar. We initialize NPM, add descriptions to our package, add auto, add all of that detail. And then we also install Mocha. This is going to be our test runner. And then we install SuperTest. We're going to be using the RESTful Booker API created by Mark Winterham. And we're going to use the JSON Post Test API as well. These two APIs are going to give us enough to check for the five scenarios that is doing a positive API call that should return a valid response, doing a negative API call that should return an error message, checking that if the token is incorrect, it does not give us access, ensuring that the API response matches the expected schema, and doing workflows to ensure that the data persists throughout as expected. One of the first things I like to do when automating API is to test it out first in Postman so that I can determine what the URL is, what parameters I need, etc. So for this, we are going to be doing a simple get post and we just enter a URL and it should return to us the list of all posts that is there. So we require Chakram and we are using the assertion expect from the module. We create or describe and or it which comes from Mocha. So we are getting all posts and we're verifying the correct response for the valid post. And we say chakram.get and we use the URL that is provided with us and for the get that is the only parameter that you need. Then we are going to 
save the response that we're getting in a variable called response and we need to make this async as we need to wait for the API call to be made. Once it is that we do that, we're going to log out the response to see what it is that we're getting. And in order for a test to run, we need to say node underscore modules and go into Mocha and then go into the path of which we have all our API tests and then we can run NPM test and all our tests should pass. So if we look here, we're getting a response with user ID, an ID, a title, and a body. And if we go to jsonschema.net, that is something that I use to generate my schemas for me. If I post in the response in JSON that I am getting and I click submit, it then generates a schema format that I can use to validate my API against. Now, a schema ensures that the responses are structured properly. They check for required keys that you may have, and they check that the values are of a certain type. So we are expecting to get back an array. We're expecting to have a user ID, an ID, a title, and a body. And the user ID and ID should be of type integer, the title and the body is of type string. So the schema that has been generated, it's going to check for all of those things to ensure that every time we do that call, it's giving us the required keys in a structure that we are expecting and in the type that we expect as well. So we copy to clipboard and then we are going to create a file called schema.js and we are going to say module.exports and export the schema that was generated for us. Now once we have done that, in our test, Chakram provides us with a simple command that we can expect or response to equal to a specific schema. So we are going to import that file and say expect response to have dot schema, which is the chakram command. And we just place in the schema that we're expecting. If we run our test, it passed. So we just did two things. We made a valid get request and we expected it to provide us with a valid response. We also checked that the response that we got matched an expected schema. Now we did that in Chakram, let us quickly do this in Supertest. Supertest is a bit different because it does not have a built-in schema validator but there are JavaScript modules that you can use to do schema validation and I'll show you how to do that. We're going to use the JSON schema npm module and it's going to allow us to validate our schema when we're using the super test API testing framework. So we need to do an npm install JSON schema. Now this is our super test code. We are requesting super test. We are requesting JSON schema and here we're using chai assertions. Supertest has its own assertions that you can use as well but for this example I am using chai assertions. So similar to where we had our chakram code we are requiring the schema file and we're saving it in a variable of schema and then we have our describe get all post we have our it verify correct response for valid get post and then we are making our get request. So we are in an async function and we are storing the response in the variable res. So we're saying let res equal await request https json placeholder dot type code 
dot com forward slash post dot get now if you realize when track from we said track from dot get here we are really saying super test dot get because in the very first line we have stored or super test require in the request name so we are saying request dot get and then once it is we get back that we are expecting it to pass and it should have a 200 status code so we are expecting the response status code to be equal to 200. We are calling the validate function from json schema this is on line 12 of the code that i'm showing we call validate function and we pass in two parameters the first parameter is the response body and then the second parameter is the schema that we are expecting the body to match and the validate function is going to compare those schema and we're checking that the arrow's length that we get back is equal to zero if the arrow length that we get back is equal to one or greater than zero then our test is going to fail because that is indicating that there was some error and the schema does not match with the body that we're getting back so let's do this again with a post request and it's going to be the same step when we're doing a post we're going to use the url and we're going to have a body that body is going to include a first name a last name so we're going to do our chakram.post and we're going to need a url along with a body and we're also going to need some headers we are using the restful booker api for this request we're posting a new booking our body is going to include first name last name total price deposit paid booking dates for check-in check-out as well as additional needs and we're going to pass in url body and header of content type application json we know what our response is supposed to look like so we are going to generate that in json schema.net And we're going to create a booking schema.js, export that, and then run our API call and assert that the response has the correct schema that we want. So same as above, we just change the name of the schema to booking schema. And we need to require that. So this is pretty similar to the one that we did before so it should pass once it is that we run it so we are seeing our two tests successfully pass and we can add other commands we can check the response status so expect response to have status 200 we can also check that the response has an header of content type json that we are expecting as well so we can do that because if we look we have a response of content type application json with a char set so those are some things that we can also check as well in addition to the schema and if we run our test again it should still pass as those things should be in the response once it is that we're doing a valid test for super test it's pretty similar we have our body we have our url we have what we are passing in that is application json we have that we're expecting it to be a 200 status code and we're validating the schema against the booking schema a good practice when doing api automation in addition to verifying that it works how it should,
It's always advised that you do some form of negative testing. This negative test can range from trying to do a request without the proper API key or token, having an invalid or incorrect body in your post request, trying to do a delete when it is that you do not have the permission to do a delete, sending a request with invalid body such as names that aren't expected instead of first name, you have F name. So if your model that you're passing in is invalid, that is it violates the schema that was agreed upon. These are some things that you should test for and these are negative tests that you can do. So here we have an idea of what it is that we are expecting those responses to look like. We have different response status codes that are widely used. So 200 is if the request has succeeded and 201 if you are creating something then you may get a 201. And you need to work with the developer of the API or the product manager to define what these are going to be and the messages that you can expect to get with these different status code so that once it is that you are doing your testing you have some definition of what it is you're testing for and what you should get for your negative and positive tests so 404 is not found 403 is generally used for forbidden that is the server understood the request but they are refusing to fulfill it 401 is unauthorized and this is a very important test to do because you don't just want anyone to access certain API endpoints where they are requiring a token, some form of authentication. You need to verify that works properly. So if you are unauthorized, you're going to get that unauthorized status code. And then you can have internal server error, you can have bad gateway service unavailable, etc. And ensuring that you get the correct status code is really important. This is as the HTTP layer normally is between the server and the client and it helps client developers know whether or not something has been successful and it has failed. And if it's failed, what was the reason for the failure? And then it can put something in the user interface to guide the user. Here we have a put request and if we have an invalid authorization key, then we are going to get an error message. Also, if we have a correct authorization key, but something is missing from our body, we are also going to get a bad request. So we're going to go ahead and create some automation for that. So, we would need our authorization code and we are going to need the URL. So the URL, we are doing it for a particular booking ID. We're passing in a valid body. But the incorrect thing here is the authorization code. It doesn't have the equal on the end. So if we say chakram.put, we pass in our URL, our body and our options. We're expecting the result to have a status of 403 and we're expecting the result body to say forbidden. We run that and it passes. Now we can also check for the bad request. For that, we are going to have a similar put request, but we're going to have the body missing the first name field. That is a required field. We're going to have the valid authorization and we're expecting the result to have a status of 400 and the body to say bad request. If we run that, it should pass because we are having a body that does not match the expected for a put request. So similarly with our super test code, we made the authorization incorrect. 
and we're expecting a 403 and a 4 bidden. Then we also, the authorization is correct now, but we have a missing body. So we don't have first name and we're expecting a bad request. Another way to test the boundaries of an API is to do multi-step workflows that has several requests. So in this example, we're going to create a booking. And once we do that, we are getting back a booking ID. We can use this booking ID to then do a get using that booking ID as well as update the booking. And this is a multi-step workflow that we can do. So first we need to create the booking. In creating the booking, we're going to do a post request. So we're going to use our URL as well as our body that has first name, last name, total price, deposit paid, booking dates, additional needs, etc. We're going to also have our headers, content type, application, JSON. We're going to say trackram.post, and we're going to put in our parameters, our URL, our body, and our options. Now we're going to console log out the response so that we can check to see how we're going to access the booking ID that we will need for our next request. And once we do that, we see that we go into body and then we get booking ID all in lowercase. That is important. If we say booking uppercase ID, then we'll get an undefined error because there is nothing called booking ID. So we can just say res.body.bookingid and store that into our booking ID variable. And if we run our test again and console log out booking ID, I had forgotten to not have a capital I, but once I change that, I get a number value and this is the booking ID that we're going to use for our next test. We can also add some other assertions such as the status that we're expecting and the schema that we're expecting to be returned. Then we can start doing our next request which is the get request. So we are saying let get response equal chakram.get passing the appropriate URL, and we're using the booking ID that we just got from the post request. And we're going to say, expect the response to have a status of 200. We are passing in a first name of Julia, so we're going to check that the value is there. We can also do the same thing for the last name, check that it is equal to Brown. And we're checking another thing to ensure that the additional needs, say breakfast and lunch. You can do, other checks if you want but for this I'm just limiting it to a certain number. Once it is that we run our test it should pass because we're getting the same booking ID that we just created our request with and it should have those values that we have stipulated in our post so our get request should pass. Now the final piece to this workflow is to update that booking detail. So we're still working on the same booking, therefore we can still use that same booking ID. We could even have gone further and deleted that request. So we're going to have the URL with our booking ID. Our first name, we're going to change it to Julia Update. Our last name is going to be Browns. And for additional needs, we're changing it from breakfast and lunch to breakfast and dinner. And we need the authorization key for the put request. So we need to ensure that that's valid. Then we can say chakram.put and we pass in our options. Now we have made some updates. So we're expecting the first name to have a certain value and we're expecting the last name to also have a certain value. And we also updated the additional needs. So we want to check that that value was also updated. And if we go ahead and run this, it should pass. So this includes us creating a booking, getting something from the response, which is in this case, a booking ID, using that to do a get request to ensure that the booking was indeed created and then doing some further action on it by 
updating what it is that we initially entered and we verify the responses that we're expecting to get the schema that we're expecting to get certain values in the response and all of that pass Here are the two repositories that you can use to access the code that was shown in this tutorial. One is on Supertest and the other is on Chakram. Now there are a whole lot of different scenarios that you could have used and tested. Today we just talked about five of those scenarios. We talked about positive scenarios that should return a valid response. We paired that with creating some schemas that is going to verify that the response body that you have received matches an expected schema. We also did some error messages and I showed you a lot of different status codes that you can expect to get. And it's very important that you work with the developer of the API and you also work with your product owners, project managers, to properly document the API so that when you're automating or even doing manual testing for APIs, you know exactly what it is you're testing for, what the correct status is, what the body of it should be, etc. We also talked about not allowing for unauthorized access via missing or incorrect tokens. And we also talked about how data should persist throughout the API and how you can create workflows for your APIs. Thank you so much for coming and joining me today. I hope that you learned a lot and that you are able to use this knowledge in your workplace and make API testing an automated process that you enjoy. Let's stay connected. You can find me on Twitter at iluj876. I'm over on LinkedIn and I have my YouTube channel where I talk about these topics and more at youtube.com forward slash Julia Pottinger. Thank you and have a good rest of your week. All right, guys, I think it was a very well, well recorded session uh, and a big round of applause for Julia Pottinger, guys, if you guys uh, uh, can do that as well. Thank you so much for staying back.